How many of you have ever seen a UFO? It doesn't have to be a spaceship, just something you saw in the sky that you could not recognize. What about a cryptid or strange animal that seemed out of place? I think for as long as human civilization has existed, people have been witnessing strange sky phenomena, monsters and cryptid beings spheres triangles discs cylinders cubes objects of different shapes and sizes today i want to take a look at some of the accounts mentioned in a text of ancient rome in his work the book of prodigies julius obsequens of the fourth century a.d documented various unusual celestial phenomena observed in the roman empire for example, he described a round shield seen in the sky over Rome in 98 BC, which some modern UFO enthusiasts interpret as an early UFO sighting. Now back then, a prodigy was an extraordinary occurrence that had been reported to the Roman Senate and recognized as an adverse event, which required the satisfaction of the public. Any astronomical phenomenon such as a falling meteorite or the sighting of a fireball becomes a prodigy. Now folks, modern scholars have this habit where they like to skeptically dismiss things like this. They think everything is a symbol for something. Everything is a metaphor. It's like someone today saying they saw a fireball in the sky and the scholar reads the report and says, Oh, they're just saying that because they want to cause a distraction from the national election. I know that sounds a bit insane, but that's what they do. You could see it going on with UFO sightings during wartime. This is why it's very hard to trust scientists, historians, scholars, or the media because they care more about maintaining their credibility than the truth. So where does that leave us? I guess we just know better. Every minute of every day, your body heals, repairs, and regenerates you from the inside out. Yet every day exposure to heavy metals and toxins builds up and blocks your body's natural abilities. Natural zeolite is nature's answer to our toxic body burden. Breakthrough sound wave technology creates the world's first colloidal zeolite. Touch tone essentials Pure Body Extra Colloidal Zeolite helps clean out the chemicals from the body with an easy to use spray so you can make room for healthy in your life. Click the link in the description box below to order your supply of Zeolite today because now is the time to live your best life. Very little is known about Julius Obsequens himself, and his work has survived primarily through the efforts of later scholars who preserved and referenced it. The Book of Prodigies is mainly a summary of earlier works, particularly drawings on the writings of the Roman historian Livy. Livy's work contained detailed records of Roman history, including accounts of prodigies and omens. Obsequens condensed these into a single text, covering the period from 249 BC to 12 BC. The historical context of the book is really important. When Obsequens put together the Book of Prodigies, the Roman Empire was going through big changes, like the spread of Christianity and the slow decline of the old Roman polytheistic religion. The book shows a time when Romans still believed that prodigies were direct messages from the gods. 
but it was also a period when people were beginning to question and reinterpret these beliefs. The Book of Prodigies catalogs a series of unusual events from natural disasters to strange births and other phenomena that the Romans interpreted as omens. Prodigies were often considered warnings from the gods, showing their displeasure or warning signs for future events. The text is laid out as a list of these events, with each entry briefly describing the prodigy and its consequences. For example, Obsequens records events like earthquakes, unusual weather patterns, the appearance of strange animals, and celestial phenomena such as comets and eclipses. One famous entry describes a round shield seen in the sky over Rome, which some modern readers interpret as a possible early UFO sighting. Other entries detail bizarre occurrences like statues weeping blood, rivers running with milk, or animals giving birth to deformed offspring. Events that were all considered signs of divine intervention. In ancient Rome, prodigies were taken very seriously, and their interpretation was a matter of the state. The Romans believed that these events were of the gods' will, and failing to take these warnings seriously could result in disaster. The Senate would consult religious experts, such as the augurs and heraspices to interpret prodigies and determine the appropriate rituals to appease the gods. The text shows a culture that was really focused on staying in the gods' good graces, where interpreting prodigies was closely linked to political and military choices. For example, if they saw a bad omen, they might delay battles or perform elaborate rituals to avoid disaster which is interesting because some nations will look at religious figures like the Pope to grant permission to go to war. On a bigger scale, the book also highlights how the Romans tended to view the world as full of signs and omens where every unusual event could carry some deeper meaning, which is not too far off from what many people still do today. It's pretty much the same thing as saying, there are no coincidences, or everything happens for a reason. Obsequens mentions an incident where fiery globes were seen moving across the sky, which the Romans associated with military conflicts. Another entry describes a time when the sky appeared to be on fire, with reports of flames or fiery objects moving through the heavens. Obsequens also recounts the sighting of a flaming torch that appeared in the sky. A bright, fiery object seen moving through the air was often associated with war, famine, or other large-scale disasters. In another account, Obsequens describes burning shields seen in the sky over several regions. Chariots of the gods, ships in the sky, how unidentified aerial phenomena left their mark in ancient cultures. In the Bible, the prophet Ezekiel mentioned a divine chariot. It glowed like hot metal in a fire, and Ezekiel could see four living beings in it. They looked human-like, though they had four faces and four wings. The Vimana, the flying chariots of the gods, also appear in ancient Indian epics, including the Mahabharata and the Ramayana. In Hindu myths, the gods were portrayed as riding these chariots to every corner of the universe. Describing importance of the winter of 218 BC, the Roman historian Livy said a spectacle of ships gleamed in the sky. The Second Punic War had begun and the enemy general Hannibal was on the verge of a series of victories. Maybe these ships in the sky were odd cloud formations. But Livy's choice of words suggests something shining or gleaming, qualities even today associated with UAPs. Livy reports another appearance of ships in the sky in 173 BC, when a great fleet allegedly appeared. 
in the spring of 217 BC, with Hannibal still threatening Rome, Livy says round shields were seen in the sky over central Italy. Livy doesn't say if these objects gleamed like the ships seen in the previous year, but the shields recall the appearance of flying saucers, the type of UAP that came to prominence at the height of the Cold War. Another curious classical UAP is recorded by the Greek writer Plutarch in his life of Lucullus, a Roman general. Lucullus's forces were about to fight King Mithridates VI of Pontus when a strange object appeared between the two armies. That the object was described as a pithos, a vessel which has a specific shape, suggests something more than a flashing light. Some have interpreted this as a meteor, but Plutarch's focus on its shiny metallic nature does not match this possibility. A pithos is basically a giant vase. Whatever it was, both armies thought it was a bad omen and withdrew. Roman Jewish historian Josephus, writing about war between Roman and Jewish forces, records an aerial battle between UAPs in AD 65. Before sunset, chariots were seen in the sky, accompanied by armed battalions hurtling through the clouds. Josephus says numerous eyewitnesses saw it and believed it foretold the Roman victory that followed. So the reason I showed you that article is because if you've noticed, and you can go look into this if you want to see for yourself, almost every time there is a war or battle, there are UFO sightings. There are also rumors of UFO activity and talk within the government dealing with the UFO phenomena. Now, I would agree that most of these sightings are a case of mistaken identity. Today, we have aircraft, drones, balloons, missiles, etc. But that doesn't explain why this occurred in ancient Rome during wartime and in other locations and time periods. Let's take a look at what else is in this book of prodigies. Obsequens records several instances where animals were born with abnormal features, including animals with extra limbs, animals born without heads, or those with other deformities. The appearance of animals in unexpected locations is another type of prodigy mentioned. For example, Obsequens described animals typically found in the wild suddenly appearing in the city or sacred places. The book also includes references to sightings of creatures that seem to be hybrids or entirely monstrous in form. Obsequens records the birth of a lamb with both male and female sexual organs or a type of intersex condition. One account in the book describes the sighting of a snake with feet. This type of creature, which combines characteristics of both reptiles and other animals, was considered monstrous because it did not fit into the natural categories recognized by the Romans. He also mentions several instances where animals were born with two heads. In one particular account, he describes a cow giving birth to a calf with a face resembling that of a human. This was considered a major prodigy. Such a hybrid creature would have been seen as an extremely ominous sign possibly warning of an impending disaster or crisis that blurred the lines between the natural and supernatural. And when you look through this book, you will see several deformities illustrated. This seems to be one of the common themes that are presented when it comes to ancient civilizations and somewhat normalized in modern entertainment media. What were people in those days exposed to to create such a variety of monsters. Just another interesting book I thought I would go over briefly and in between all the madness that is going on for those of you who are interested in checking that out. I didn't find anything too deep going on with this particular ancient text, but it was an interesting thing to look at nevertheless, especially if this document was based on real occurrences. 
Well, that's all for today, and there is much more to come. I do have a recommended video. Watch that video. It will be linked on screen at the top right corner of this video and in the description box and pinned comment below. Please hit the thumbs up button on your way out. YouTube has a certain way about things, especially these days. So I try to mix in videos like this that are a bit more educationally themed and tame. Everyone have a great day. Take care and as always friends, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.